Hi there, and welcome to Studio Jakarta E. Uh, today I'm here with uh, Ken Fogel, and uh, uh, he, he's working for the Dawson College in Montreal. And uh, Ken, please uh, introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Um, as uh, Ivar just said, my name is Ken Fogel. I've been a teacher in the Computer Science Technology Program at Dawson College. Uh, this is going on 31 years. This is actually my last year. I plan to retire at the end of the, the coming academic season. And I've been teaching, well, we started with G Pascal, C, C++. But in 2000, our program decided to drop COBOL. Luckily, I wasn't one of the people who had to teach that. But I was able to convince them that Java was the way to go. And so since 2002, our program at Dawson has been Java-based. And then along the way, I've been involved in other activities and uh, I've been having a good time. Yeah, the, and, and the first time we met was actually at a party in San Francisco, uh, at, at a NetBeans party of all things. So, so you, you were involved in the, in the NetBeans dream team, I think. Well, <clears throat> that was it. Um, it's interesting, about seven or eight years ago, uh, one of the product managers at, at Oracle, uh, Girjan Wenga, and I always mispronounce his name, so my apologies to him. Um, he had seen something I'd written, and he invited me to collaborate on an article about using NetBeans in education. And I was flattered, and I said, absolutely. And then I didn't get back to him for seven months. And when I did get back to him, it's because I had already written an article and actually started a blog for the first time that seven or eight years ago. And that led him to invite me to Java One to be part of a panel. And that was the point when I saw the, the, the possibilities, the significance of becoming part of the community instead of just being a quiet little teacher off in a corner of the world. Yeah, and, and you've been quite busy and you're very busy this year. You're, uh, uh, you're participating in uh, Jakarta E and you recently were, uh, were you elected in or appointed to the Jakarta E Ambassadors Leadership Council? Well, the, the Jakarta EE Ambassadors, used to be called the Guardians, was an organization uh, originally designed to, to promote, Jak well, then Java EE, at a time when Oracle seemed to have lost interest in it. And um, as things have changed, Java became Jakarta, the Eclipse Foundation uh, became the home for it. We no longer needed to call ourselves Guardians, but the term changed to Ambassadors. And, and basically to be uh, another voice in promoting uh, enterprise Java. And, and that's significant because the reality is most of the Java installations today are running the back end of major corporations around the world. And we may say, you know, frameworks like Spring are really popular, but the fact is Spring wouldn't exist if there was an EE in the, in the marketplace. So, we're healthy competitors, but there is a dependency between us. So that's significant. So uh, recently Reza, who had started the organization, reached out to some of us to transform the organization into a, a, a voice for encouraging the use. And uh, at least as we started up, they gave me the title of vice president. So that was very flattering, but we will in the course of the year set up a proper structure and have voting and so on. But there's a, a group of us, we call ourselves a leadership council, who are just, you know, formalizing and deciding how we can continue to promote EE in collaboration with Eclipse. Yeah, and, and so far I think you're doing a very great job there. So we're uh, super happy for the ambassadors. Uh, but, but the ambassadors isn't the only thing, you, you also, got elected into the, the JCP Executive Committee uh, as a, a committee representative, or, or uh, it's, it's the associate seat, I think it's called. So, that's, so. that's right. Um, I'm one of those people who believes that, uh, who has time to start from the bottom up? So I joined the JCP and immediately ran for election to the Executive Committee. And, you know, I've been a, a Java user. I've been, you know, I've known a lot of the people at Oracle over the years. I've got to make some really amazing friends. And I just felt that, uh, at least in terms of what was happening to Java in the education field, that Java was being uh, reduced in significance, that 
schools were saying, oh, Python is the better language to learn programming or JavaScript. And they are excellent languages. But the question is, if you are interested in a career in software development, I felt strongly that Java was the best first language for you to work with. You may end up working with other languages, but Java is where you had to start. So I thought the JCP could have a voice in trying to encourage, uh, you know, education and outreach, uh, something that happened more in the 2000s, but kind of faded away. So I ran for election. Uh, I had a platform and I, to my surprise, got elected. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing that happened to me the first time I joined the EC as well. It, it's, it's just I went out there and gathered voices, uh, votes, and, and suddenly you were there. And, and that's a good thing. And you actually got the uh, a, a small working group in the EC working particularly with the education, as you mentioned. That's right. We, you know, um, working with Heather Van Cura, who is the... the the chair of the the J, java community process executive committee boy all these little letter acronyms are driving me nuts um we meet actually you know the ec meets about once a month but the education group meets every week we've been working on a, a slide deck uh and our goal is to distribute this to jugs around the world to encourage them to reach out to schools in their area and, and rekindle that interest in Java that we once had, that we have, as I mentioned earlier, been supplanted by other languages for you know, a range of reasons. But it's time for JUGS to start promoting Java, not just being a place for you know, learning for their members. Yeah, and, and by JUGS, you of course mean Java user groups. That's right, exactly. Another acronym. Exactly. Boy, yeah. try and that, look up JUG on the uh, internet and it's uh, embarrassing. Yeah. But l luckily, we are kind of swaying away from the acronyms in the Jakarta E space. Uh, that is for other reasons than it's just hard to remember, but uh, we're trying to spell things out. <laughs> so, so, so we say Jakarta and then the name of the specification. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And um, then I had, um, well, it, it's funny, a couple of years ago, I did a talk at, uh, I think it was still Java one then. And it was just a kind of tongue in cheek talk about how there were uh, more Java villains than there were Java champions. And it was really about talking about the things a developer does just to get the job done on time when that manager is breathing down your neck. And so we talked about, you know, bad design patterns that are used. And uh, again, it was meant to be funny. It was meant to be humorous. And uh, it was actually probably one of the most popular things I ever did. I used to, I refer to it as my experience in stand-up. And then of course, the whole thing fell apart when they made me a Java champion. And so now I was no longer a villain and I suddenly had to do a lot better. Oh, that was difficult. Yeah. Sometimes it can be hard to be rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> and then so um, something else that I brought, uh, at least to my students, to Montreal, after going to the, the conferences in San Francisco for a few years, and I had the, the good fortune of being supported by the schools that I work for, I decided to bring some of that to Montreal. And so we're now coming up on our fifth anniversary of a small conference called DOSCON that happens every January. Of course, it's going to be different this year, and we're still working on that. But we've been very fortunate to have some of the, the, the finest speakers from around the world who have come to Montreal to speak to students, to speak to the development community in Montreal. And I'm quite proud of, of being able to develop this conference, and it is 100% free. Yeah, it, it sounds like an amazing conference. I've had it on my agenda to get there. <laughs> Uh, I, I will try to get there, uh, I, but I guess next year would probably be a virtual event. That's right. We're, I'm, I'm trying to find a way to, to set us apart. And so right now the idea I'm playing with and I'm going to start reaching out to, to speakers in the past is rather than, you know, live sessions, I really like to have, you know, some of the, the great people in, the, in our community prepare short presentations, record it. Uh, maximum 20 minutes, preferably 10 minutes, get to the point. 
Let someone who wants to join us for that day, you know, pick, as I'm calling it, a film festival and let them pick what they'd like to see. Uh, I've been to conferences, 30-minute, uh, 45-minute, hour-long sessions. It just doesn't work. You wander off. Uh, you go upstairs to the kitchen to get something to eat. You're not as focused. So I'm thinking of having, well, hopefully more presenters than we've ever had, and very short. Let's get to the point right away. I don't need to know the backstory. Show me the solutions I need. Yeah, it sounds like a great concept for a conference. I'm uh, looking forward to it. So uh, let's go uh, a little bit towards the uh, topic of Jakarta EE. Mm -hmm. So uh, you uh, are, uh, as we talked about, you are in the Jakarta EE ambassadors and you also uh, have made some contributions to Jakarta EE. And in fact, you're actually doing a talk next week about your first pull request with Jakarta EE, isn't that right? That's right. So uh, I guess I'm a bit of a late bloomer in all of this. Uh, you know, having first joined the community and became you know, be, becoming a speaker just six or seven years ago. And uh, I just decided, gee, it's about time I actually contributed to open source as much as we, you know, encourage our students and, and talk about the significance of, of contributing to this wider community. We see a lot of things going on right now where the question of the quality of software has come up. And open source is one way to address this. Now, I didn't see myself as the person who was going to solve the, the big micro focus, uh, micro profile problem or solve a problem with uh, concurrency in Jakarta EE. But what I could contribute was examples. I have hundreds of files, and they're all up on my, my GitLab repository that I use in my classes, right? They demonstrate a range of concepts. Uh, I teach project courses. So these little samples, whether it's, you know, how to send an email from a, you know, a JSF page or, you know, how to handle a timestamp in a Java FX application. So I have hundreds of these and I thought it might be a good idea to start contributing them to, you know, the, the Eclipse Foundation and, and wherever else I think the type of examples I've prepared would be interesting. And so that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, I had to learn a lot about how you go about submitting. It wasn't just as easy as going, look at my amazing code, you know, make it available to the world. Uh, there was a bit of a humbling experience. Uh, but I think now that I've done my first one, I'm ready to start the assembly line and get a lot of my samples out there and be part of a number of examples type projects at the Eclipse Foundation and possibly other places. That sounds very great because uh, usually the samples uh, are created by developers who are uh, probably experts on the technology or at least very good at the technology, but they don't have the kind of the teacher's way of <laughs> building them up. So, 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 so it, they are kind of uh, uh, easy for a new developer to get started with them step by step. Uh, getting through them for the technology. One of the things I'll, I'll say for, for the tech talk was uh, a somewhat unusual interaction over the topic of comments and code. Yeah. Uh, it was strange. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, we, we also have uh, recently launched uh, the website called start.jakarta.ee which is meant to be a starter for new programmers on, on Jakarta EE, where uh, it's kind of modeled from the startspring.io and the startmicroprofile.io, uh, where you can have a generator to generate a sample project for you. And, and, and I will encourage you also to, to take a look at that project and maybe also get involved there, because uh, the samples you're talking of there could probably things we could include in this generator to set up a, a startup project. I have to admit, I wasn't familiar with it. I will definitely look into it. As I said, uh, you know, I have, you know, hundreds of files and um, I know for myself, uh, my background is unusual. Uh, I didn't go to school to do this. Actually, I didn't go back to school until the nineties. And that's after I had already been a teacher for 10 years. Uh, but 
I've always found that my learning is based on examples. Show me how something is done. Let me take code and then start changing it, transforming it to meet my needs. Recognizing that what I'm looking at isn't going to be perfect. Uh, boy, Stack Overflow drives me crazy all the time where, you know, all these fragments of code out of context. And I even watch my students, you know, copy and paste and go, sir, why doesn't it work? And so I've always believed in, in complete examples uh, that, you know, are not what my students need. They need to massage, to change it, to alter it, to meet the specifications of the work I've assigned them. And that's how I learned. And I, I believe they've started to recognize that just, you know, reading long pages of text isn't going to be it, isn't going to do it. Just reading long, uh, you know, sections of source code isn't going to do it. You actually have to get your hands on the source code and you have to start playing with it and making changes to it. Yeah, that sounds like a great strategy. And uh, any last words you would have to say? Uh, why should a young developer get uh, involved in an open source project and maybe why should they get involved in Jakarta EE? Well, you know, the, the two issues here, um, in terms of Jakarta EE, uh, the fact is if you're looking for employment in the widest range of companies, a background in Java, Jakarta EE, backend programming is going to serve you better than I believe any other language out there. Now, in terms of open source, as I said earlier, uh, the key word here is, first of all, it's open, which means contributing means you're also learning. And that's significant. And um, there's something, uh, we take our students to visit the Google offices in Montreal every year. And the question the students always ask is, how do I get a job at your you know, amazing, famous corporation? And, and the answer is always the same, and that is, uh, their first question is always going to be, uh, what have you contributed to open source? Their first question is not what degree you got, what was your grade point average, how have you contributed to the community, how have you been part of open source, how have you demonstrated your passion for what you do? And I think that's why contributing to open source is important. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed this talk uh, very much. And uh, if you're interested in uh, hearing more from Ken, uh, tune in to the Jakarta Tech Talk on Wednesday next week. And uh, we'll take it from there. So thank you very much for listening. And I'll see you later. Perfect. Bye-bye.